up guys, here we are Nigel with, back with you Nigel's Model Image and at last we have part 13 of this lots of you have been asked for, asking for it so I thought I'd better get on with it um, as you can see, if you remember if you saw part 12 it is all grey but we're doing it yellow over grey uh, a lot of people said this is inaccurate, it's incorrect and all that I don't really care, I don't want to sound rude but I don't really care, I love the yellow over grey look um, I have seen that in the mini art kit there is an option to do grey so you know we can just assume this was taken off the Russian front and put into service somewhere else or just camouflaged or painted in a field or whatever and that's what I'm doing and if you remember what I did was painted the wheels on the hull and painted the hull with the wheels on so you've got areas where they wouldn't have bothered taking the wheels off to spray all this and everything so there's areas that don't have any yellow paint on at all which is the look I'm looking for. So that's exactly what I'm going for and it's the look I want. And um, I'm sorry if you if it really gets to you that it's inaccurate. You know, if somebody says to me, uh, uh, the HK model's Lancaster canopy is fine. I'm like, no, it's not. It's obviously not. But this is not, I'm not trying to say that this is realistic or this is accurate. It's just the look I want on this model. So that's where I'm going from. But I have actually found, as I say, the mini art kit calls out for a grey one. And also the I have found a website that talks about all the Stugs and everything. And apparently there was a Stug G F3 or whatever it is, Stug 3 FG, um, in grey. So it is feasible. Maybe not accurate, but it was feasible. So there we go. Right, so what I'm gonna do is carry on with this yellow over grey scheme. And if I really don't like it, I'll just paint all yellow. It's, it's not a problem, I'll just paint all yellow, it's not a problem. So the first thing I want to do is get the gun in, because if I'm going to paint around this area here, obviously they wouldn't have taken the gun out and beautifully sprayed in there. They would have left a lot of grey in there. So basically what I'm going to do is put the gun in, which is an art unto itself. Let's get that hatch out of the way. Just put the gun in, like so. We've still got to get some matte coat on this gun. As you can see, it is not the easiest thing in the world to do. There we go. But it does go in. Okay, so we can get that in there, just get it to clip in temporarily, if it'll stay there, I'm not sure that it will, but anyway, um, and then what I could do is paint around this area here, I'm going to have to get a cloth or something and shove it in here, maybe just to stop the overspray going in, yeah that gun don't want to stay where it is does it, what a bastard, excuse my language but it wouldn't go in at all. I cut the tabs a bit to make it fit and now it's too loose. Um, I want to wedge it in there somehow, don't I? I was thinking I could put the roof on, but the trouble is the periscope comes up through and I don't want that getting painted either. So I wonder if I could wedge a pair of tweezers down in there. There we go. Where there's a wheel, there's a way. <laughs> The close pegs got that held down in there, so now we can put our close that. I'll have that hatch open. We can put our paper towel down in here just to stop any overspray. It's only while I spray around this area here, and then we'll put the roof on. But um, I can't put the roof on with the gun in there because the periscope sticks up through, and I don't want any paint getting on the periscope. So there we are. What I might do is just get some musking tape. Just tape over there. Oh, come on. Tape in there. Just like so. And then some on this side as well. And we've got a plate that goes in there, so I can actually fit that in as well, I think. Dry fit in with it. There we go, that'll dry fit in there. So now I can put some tape across the top of there. There we go.
over here like that. So, in fact, what's happening there is the back of that plate butts up against the uh, the roof. So we will have to mask the back like that. There we go. Now we can paint down in there, just as if they would have done the German bloke with an air gun standing there spraying over it. So that's what I'll do. Okay, so I'm using for this, I'm using LP55, which is a dark yellow too, which I don't know if it's the right colour or not. There's loads of different yeah, German yellows in the LP range. So I'm using this one because I've got two of them. I've pre-thinned it in, in the jar so I can just pour it in and use it. Roughly 40% of the uh, Tamiya, um, Tamiya lacquer thinner is retarder type. So that's what I'm using there. Um, and you can see the sort of effect I'm going for there on that back plate. You can just see the grey coming through. So uh, it's not going to be like, you know, really hardly noticeable. It's going to be yellow and camouflaged and everything. And I'm using for this the Bar Sharp. I've got the Bar Sharp airbrush, 0.5 needle in there, purely because I can't be bothered to change it. Um, and I'm using this purely because it's got a bigger paint cup and a lid. So you can, the trouble is with this one, I love this little Iwata, but the paint cup is so small that you're forever, with a big project like this, you're forever refilling. So I'll probably use this for doing the camouflage on the Lancaster as well. Or I might use my other, I've got another Iwata with a bigger cup. That's one of the problems if you don't uh, airbrush properly. Um, for the beginners out there, when you spray, if you spray you get spatter. In fact I'm getting leakage, the needle is actually leaking. So the needle is not fully home in the nozzle. So it probably needs a bloody good clean to be honest because it's, it's had loads of primers and stuff put through it. There we go, it's not leaking now. This is no paint coming out at all. But basically what happens if you stop spraying like that, when you start again you get spatter. What you're supposed to do, if you watch my finger, you're supposed to go down with the air, come back with the paint, go forward and up and then you won't get spatter then. That's what happens when you get, you see the spatter on the front of there, here. That's what happens if you don't let off. So remember that. So all I'm going to do here is just start on the top and start blowing it in. So work, from this, work around the centre. Build the colour up thin. Slowly and just let it build up real slow. I've got about 15, 18 psi here. As I say, this is a 0.5 needle, so I've got to be really careful of it, flood it. Really, for some issue, you really want a 0.3 needle. But um, I'm just too lazy to change it. So, thinking about now how the Germans would have painted it, the guy would have been stood here, he would have been leaning over painting it. Would he have bothered to lean over and get that all in there? Probably not, but he would have had some overspray getting in there. So, just get a bit in there, nothing much. He would have painted over the top because that's where he would have been stood on top painting the roof. So we get some down in there. Get some down in here. Believe me, once this has had some washes, chipping, some dust and pigments and all, all that stuff, it's going to look great. It's going to look really, really messed up. So that's what we're after. So I'll do a little bit more, but this absolutely stinks. What I'm going to do is get it in the booth. And I'm glad I got that big booth from Bart Sharp because this fits in there beautifully. So um, in fact, it's starting to stink. I'm going to get this in the booth now. And get the rest of this paintwork done. But as you can see, what I'm doing around the front is painting it as if the gun was there when the tank was grey. So there's going to be grey bits left everywhere.
And as I said in the beginning, not accurate, I know, but it's what I want. So here we go. It's the same as my wooden handle tools, they're not accurate, but I want it to look accurate, I want it to look good. So I'm going over to the booth and I'll be back when I'm done. There we go, that is the effect we're looking for and you can see it's quite blotchy, it's quite thin. That's what I want and that's what I've got. And also if you look down around the gun there you can see there's a lot of grey still there where they wouldn't have bothered painting if this was real. So there we go. So I can uh, get my gun out. Oh, missus. <laughs> I'll get the gun out. Yee get arrested for that round here. And um let's have a look at how it looks. Let's have a look at that piece at the top up. Let's take that out of there. And we can get the gun out. Uh do 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 do. I need to lower it down, that's it. It has to be down a certain way to come out. There we go. So you can see all grey underneath. I will do the underneath of the barrel actually because that isn't very accurate, is it? They would have painted the bottom of the barrel, I'm sure. But so all in there you can see it's still grey, so happy with that. So I'll get a piece of masking tape across there now and get the roof back on. And there we go, as if by magic, but dumpf, all done, yellow, uh with grey showing through. So uh yeah, happy with how that's looking. So um I'm sure I filmed this bit before, but uh, never mind, I think I must have lost it. So uh, yeah, we're all done, all painted. So now we've got to look at uh, getting it all sort of finished off and, and weathered and everything, which is my least favourite part of modelling. I must admit, I don't particularly enjoy it weathering, especially on this scale. So uh, basically, what we need to do now is look about getting these tracks painted. Now, um, one of my biggest issues with tracks, and, and, uh, if you lay it down like this and you paint it, okay, that's all well and good, but when you go around sprockets and stuff, you can see the track opens up. So if I just paint it like that, when the track opens up, we'll have light grey paint showing. So what I've done, I've got a Coke can, okay? Coke can, put it underneath there like that, and then just drag it through, just drag it through like that while I'm painting it. Okay, and then we can move along, drag it through, and that way we can actually get the paint in there. And we can also uh, do it on the same, when we, we, we can unpin it, Okay, or we can unpin it, turn the track inside out, just like so, repin it, which makes life easy. Let's try the other end. So we can repin the tracks. I've actually been doing those, um, I bought that Crusader tank, no, was it Crusader? Yeah, Crusader tank from Border Model. I've actually been working on those tracks and I'm going to do a video about that because they are a bastard. So there we go. So we can do the same here. It's not actually so effective there, but um, maybe use the can on its side because the track doesn't tend to bend so much backwards. But we want to make sure we get paint in every single nook and cranny. Um, and I'm not going to paint them with rust. I see many people paint their tracks rusty. Um, and in my experience, from pictures I've seen and from people I've spoke to, tank tracks don't necessarily rust unless the tank is, is abandoned. So if it's on, if you're doing a, a, like a D-Day diorama and there's a couple of tanks, a couple of these on the side of the road or something, blown up or whatever, then yes, their tracks, their tracks would quickly rust because I don't believe they were painted. But um, in normal everyday use, certainly where the sprockets go, where the idlers go, you will get very shiny areas. Um, and also where the tracks are, if it's on tarmac or concrete roads, you'll get very shiny areas where the tracks are on the ground, obviously. And then because they're always working and running through dirt and stuff, they're always sort of cleaning themselves off. And if they get caked in mud, they're caked in mud. You won't see the rust through there anyway. So you may have a few little rusty patches, but they would never be completely rusty, especially for a tank, even that's just been driven for the last 10 minutes. You'll have shiny areas where the wear is. If you think about it, it's, it's quite obvious. 
So I'm going to paint these with Tamiya XF84 Dark Iron. Um, where is it? XF84 Dark Iron. Here it is. And I'm going to use XF84 purely because I've got loads of it. I would use an LP paint, but I may as well use this stuff up. So um, I've got about three or four bottles of it, I think. Uh, so basically that's what I'm going to do now. I'm not going to show any spraying because I'm going to do it in the booth and everything with the window open mask on and all that. But, um, I'll, you know, basically you can see what I'm going to do. I may not even bother using the can for doing these. I may just do it like this and spray here and then move around and spray here. But we want to make sure we come in from all the angles, get in there, get it all nicely sprayed. At least it's nice that it's grey plastic to start with. I like that Border Models uh, tank with the... Um, the tan plastic, which is a pain. So, and Trumpeter, of course, they use the brown plastic, which is a pain in the ass as well. So, we'll get these done, and then I'll come back. Okay, so there's our tracks, all painted, got in all the angles, got absolutely covered in paint. But so uh, we got there in the end. So all the all the tracks are done. So all the angles are looking lovely. So um, what we need to do now is basically. Okay, that's better. For those of you thinking about buying a ZV1, Sony ZV1 for doing this sort of stuff. I would personally look elsewhere. Um, it's a great little camera, but I'm really struggling with the controls. I think that's because I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, but things like, it's really annoying. You have this PC remote function and you have to basically have the camera on, go into the menu, select the PC remote function, then go into your computer, select the PC remote function. That will then talk to the camera and then you can watch what you're actually filming on the computer screen. Um, now and again, the connection drops out. I don't know why, but just now and again, why you fit, it's only happened about three times, and then you have to reboot the computer because it won't look for the camera again. And it's really annoying. And then another thing that's really annoying is when you finish filming, say you've just done a, a little segment and I just want to go and look and see how it looks. I have to go back into PC remote function, turn it off, disconnect the computer, then turn the phone off, then turn the, the camera off and then turn the camera back on before I can actually download the, the, the file onto the computer. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, you can run directly from the micro USB to a HDMI cable and run it like that. Um, I did buy a small screen off Amazon and it was absolute crap. So, um, yeah, so I, I I don't know. I think there's probably better cameras for doing this sort of job, but um, I've got this one. So here we go. So we've got these tracks now. And I'm going to look at making some of the areas bright. So you can see we've got this sort of dark iron look to it, but it's all dull. It's got no sheen to it whatsoever. And in real life, if it's in an area where there's, you know, tarmac, rubble, dirt, um, in some cases even sand I guess because the sand would have a, a polishing effect I'd imagine, imagine. but um, basically where the, where the road wheels run will be clean, the sides of the horns would be clean um, and it would have a sort of shiny look to it because it's, it's, it's going to be that, it won't be shiny like chrome but it will be clean iron if you know what I mean, if you know what clean iron looks like it has a little bit of a sheen to it so we could actually go in with um, this one here, the metal colour which is one of Phil Flory's favourites, the dark iron. He dry brushes a lot of his cockpits and that with it. And it is wonderful stuff. You can dry brush it onto bare plastic and it gives you an amazing finish. I will do a video on it one day. Biggest downfall, it's it's like enamel based, so the enamel thinners will attack it. So um, we want to put washes and you know pigments and all that all over these tracks. So I'm going to use this. This is an old, this is very old. I don't think you can get them anymore. But this one is basically gold gun metal. There's going to be similar out there. And all I'm going to do is with a cotton bud, I'm just going to dip, dip the cotton bud in there. And then I'm going to brush it onto my tracks where the wheels would go. Okay, and we can just basically do that and we can polish it. And you can see what it's doing. It's giving us like a polished look. But it's also giving us a polished edge to it as well. So it, it kind of looks even more authentic. So it's like a double whammy. And what I will do when I'm doing this properly, I'll put some paper down because you don't want to be getting pigments on your bench because they're a nightmare. And you can see here, I can get that on my finger and I can rub that onto these tracks here. And it will give them that sort of polished -y look on the edges. Okay, so you can see that there, hopefully. You can see it's got like a, it's a very slight sheen, but it's not like chrome. It's, it's, I think it's much better than dry brushing. So I'm going to get a piece of paper down. And get these done and then I'll show you how they look when they're done. In fact I might do some and just speed the camera up I think.
Okay, of course the other way you could do this is to have the track with the pin, like I've done the pin in it. You could have it with the lead out flat and then just working it flat on the bench. The only trouble is you get pigment everywhere. So uh, you can see you could get this off of here onto your finger and then you can rub it all off onto your tracks. And you, the more you rub, as you can see here, if I just keep rubbing there on those two links, you can see you can get a very, where are we? See a very, very shiny surface with literally the dust that's fallen off the rest of the tracks. Okay, now obviously if you're doing like 35th scale tracks, like I'm talking about that crusade, you have to be really careful doing this because generally the pins are so small they're going to be very weak and you're just going to keep breaking them. So you, you could keep using a cotton bud or whatever. But as you can see, you can just rub this with your finger. I can go along here, I can get some shine onto the horns. And it's um, really grip, they grip everything these tracks, they're a pain in the ass to be honest. Um, there we go, we can just come along there and just get some shine on those horns and you can see it's literally the dust that is on my finger. It's like with this, it's like less is more. It really does work very, very well. I'm not really sure I should be getting it on the skin, but people have for years. Okay, so there we go. So that's that. All right. And we can see we've got like a nice metallic looking, this white paper is really messing the camera up. But you can see we've got a nice metallic looking track now, it almost looks like it is real iron. Okay, so that's that done. Right, so now we need to look at these sprockets and these idlers. So what I do with these, I will literally get some on my finger, like so. And around the outsides literally just rub it on and you can see what we'll get is a metallic look like the outside edge has been rubbing against the tracks as you can see on there you can see here now we've got a reflective metal edge to it so that's pretty cool, okay? And as I said earlier just now, you just keep rubbing it. I'm not sure if we can polish it with a cotton bud, but we can get a, a very bright finish to it just by, just keep rubbing it. The more you rub it, the shinier it'll get. That seems to work. I'm sort of going across it at like 45 degrees. It seems to like that a lot better than just going around it straight. And there we go, you can see we've got a nice shiny edge there now. Now we also want it to be shiny down inside where the horns have been rubbing. So actually I'm going to get a new cotton bud. So just get some in there. I'll just squash the end of this cotton bud down. And we'll just rub some into the inside edges like so. And I'm sorry about the paper messing the camera up, guys. I'll see if I can do something with the editing. But uh, basically, I don't want to get this stuff all over my bench because it just doesn't come off. Okay, so there we are. So that's the idler dealt with. I don't know if we can come with a bit of paper towel. Let's have a look, see if we can... Shine it over some paper. To, no, your finger seems to do it the best. So that's that. And then we get the sprocket again. Get some on our finger. And then we're just going to rub it onto the sprockets like so. And it will find its way from your finger because your finger's soft. It will find its way into the nooks and crannies. And what you can end up with here is a nice shiny sprocket teeth. Now in between the teeth we can always use a cotton bud. And when I put my finger in the pot I'm not putting it down into the pigment. I'm just literally rubbing some off the side. I'm not I'm not actually putting much pigment on here at all. So now you can see on there we've got a shiny metallic edge to our sprocket and as I say I'm going to get in between them 
like that, but I'm not going to bore you to death with watching me do that. So then we'll do the same on the inner teeth. You can see the pigment is actually, you know, although my finger is just, it's just basically dust, it's, it's still coming off as like particles and laying everywhere all over it. But don't, as long as you blow it, don't rub it, it'll make shiny marks everywhere. As long as you just blow it off, it's fine. And then again, we can get, get a cotton bud in the pigment and just get in between the teeth. Just how it would look in real life. Okay. As I say, you could do all this with dry brushing with metallic paints and stuff, but be careful because a lot of them are enamel based. I know the AK one is. I know that the uh, I'm not sure that the, the Mr. Hobby one is this one. I'm not sure that it is enamel based, but I do know that enamel thinners does remove it. If you remember, I did what was it? I did was it on my Vulcan build when I did the wheels with the shiny silver and then when I put a wash on it all just came off. I, no, the, I think it was the engine intakes wasn't it on my Vulcan build and I did them with the aluminium, polished them up and then when I put the black wash on it all just came off <laughs> so that was a waste of time. But there you go you can see we've got a it looks like metal sprockets because they've got the shiny teeth and when you put them in the track like so you can see we see all the where's the wheel there you see all the shiny all the shiny shiny we've now got proper metal look on everything so it's uh, very authentic I do love using this stuff and I mean to tell you I would buy yourself a pot guys if you're on a tight budget because I've had this for probably 12 oh blimey 15 years maybe <laughs> so and you can see it's not even a third gone so it is incredible stuff for getting your metallic finishes it's not very hard wearing but uh, for stuff like this it is wonderful because we can come along now and put washes over it and it shouldn't really affect it at all because it is so rubbed in okay so I'm gonna go around and do in between the sprockets get the others done and then I'll come back Okay, so there we go. Um, sprockets are done, idlers are done. Just looking at this, in reality, where the idler goes, you would probably have um, two narrow bands here, either side of the horns, that would be shinier. And you can see that if you want to actually get that effect, what you can do is just come with the cotton bud and just rub into that corner, and it is kind of giving that effect. It's kind of polishing up the area. It's actually... it's. It's demarcating, demarking, denoting, I don't know, it's showing, it's showing the area next to the, next to the horn to be brighter. Looking very good. If you can hear some singing in the background, that's um, just up the road from me, on the other side of the road there's a green. And there's obviously a bunch of girls <laughs> that have just become of age that they go out and play on their own rather than being sat in and there's about five or six of them and they're always singing and I do laugh I, I, it's they're so funny and uh, they're always singing pop songs and stuff they were bloody when the um, the Jubilee was on they were uh, reenacting all the, the marches and everything up and down the road and singing God knows what and it's it's really funny because you think you'd find it annoying after a while but it just doesn't get annoying at all it's just hilarious really really funny so better than hearing the lads screaming up and down the road on mopeds that's for sure i just don't know lads come around screen up on mo mopeds and hit one of them because i will certainly have something to do with it to do about that should i say so uh, there we go i'm going to carry on doing this and that will be it for the tracks with the metal this is the downside look at my hands you know it's like and they will be like that until i seal it all in now if i give them a, a quick varnish it would seal them in but i think it may lose the metal effect so we'll just have to put up with it but what i want to do is get a bit of a wash into them i want to get 
little bit of rust in there, you know, where little pivots have dried out and they've rusted or whatever. Um, just a few little bits and pieces, really, of dirt and stuff. But we can see, like I say, when we put the, the tracks onto the sprockets, we've got that lovely metallic look on there. And it looks, in my opinion, looks great. So, and also if you just want to give like a metallic -y look to the rest of the model, you can rub over these bits here and stuff. Just like that. So, there we are. We are done with the shiny stuff. Now we've got to start getting dirty. Got cleaned up, uh, bench all cleaned up. So, what I've got here is uh, Modeler's World Old Rust Oil Wash. And I've got some in here, I've got some of the Modeler's World Thinner and Cleaner. And I think I'm also going to get some of the... Do, 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 where's the brown? This is the brown. I've got light brown. I've got industrial... I've got deep black. Industrial dirt. I've got a dark brown. I think I have got a dark brown. Yeah, black brown. So, I think what we'll do is we'll use these two as well. And what I'm going to do now is just sort of get some kind of... Just kind of some variation going on with the colours and stuff. So we'll put some of that in there. So that's the, again, Modeler's World. I love these washes because they don't smell. That's the light brown. And then this one here is the black brown. And we can have a mixture of these three colours. And what we're going to do is just put them like into these recesses and just let them dry, really. Now this rust I think is a bit is a bit much. I think it's a so I'm gonna that's why I've got the thinners here. I'm gonna thin some of this out. I think I've got some thinners into here. In fact, I'm gonna grab my little oils pipette. Don't ever use pipettes for oils that you're gonna use with enamels because they don't like each other very much. I'm just going to make that into a much, much thinner wash. One of the things I have seen on the Modelers World website, um, as we all know, these washes and everything, they can go a bit grainy. But I actually show you on their website, and I can see it happening here. When they get grainy, you can literally just swirl it around with a brush and it breaks it up. Unlike, you know, with the um, it happens with the clay washes, the flory washes, if you contaminate them with something, it can break them down. That's not. A, I'm not knocking the washes at all. I think they're absolutely brilliant. Um, but I know that if you contaminate them, they will break down. And when I think when they've broken down, that's it. I think you might be able to microwave or something. I can't remember now. But uh, basically, once they break down, I think that's it. With these, when you get a grainy, just just break it up. Just uh, break it up. Apparently, if they get really cold, it can happen. So uh, here we go. So what I'm going to do, I'll start in the middle of the tracks here, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to. Put some random splodges of wash into these areas. Another nice thing with this wash, it doesn't attack your plastic, so you have to be careful with some of the enamel based products, they will attack the plastic. Um, but I know for a fact that this stuff here, this Modeler's World thinners, you can get you can just use odorless thinners really, but uh, I know the Modeler's World stuff is safe. Um, you need to check it first on your model because I know that we all know that particularly Bandai plastics are uh, most affected. But um, there we go. And what will happen there is this will all sort of dry out as different shades, and it won't look anything like as obvious as it does now. But it will look good under some pigments. So you may now be thinking, oh my god, what are you doing? But let's try some of that neat stuff to see what it's like. And you can see it's just a case of just going over these. And I don't want to wash the whole tracks because I don't want to get rid of all the pigments that we've put on there. And I didn't want to put the pigments on after the washes because then you run the risk of rubbing the rubbing the washes off. So it's all sort of it's all thought out in my crazy little pathetic mind. 
there we go. You can see on there we've got like a, a sort of variation of colour going on. At the moment it's all glossy and shiny and you know in your face. But once it dries out it's going to look a lot better. So I'm going to get on and get some more done. So here we are an hour and a half, two hours later and we can see we've got some variation there in colour. You can see the, the way it works. Come on focus. And you can see the way we've got the variation in the different colours of the washes there. I've also gone around the edges with some dark dirt just to sort of give, give some sort of dirty effect to the edge. And the beauty of this stuff is you can kind of rub it off from areas you don't want it in. But we can do that at any time. You can do that sort of three days, four days time. I'm not sure about a week, but I know you can do it in three or four days time. And if you want to, we could dry brush after we finished. We could dry brush some of that um, Mr. Hobby paint on there. Then we're not going to be disturbing it with any washes or anything. Just on these uh, on these track pads. And, and just go like that, really. Um, I also noticed that when I was doing this, I was using these lovely hard cotton sticks. And the wood had come through and I was actually scratching the paint off. And because of the angle of the light and everything, I couldn't see it. So I'll have to do a little bit of a repair in there. I might dry brush some of that brighter, brighter metal in there. We shall see. But um, basically now, what I want to do is get these tracks sort of dirtied up. Um, and rather than just use washes, they're not really enough. I want to get in there with some pigments. And then we'll get in there with some thinners and maybe some fixer. And just get the washes sort of settling. So this is an old set of pigments here. You, you would have recently seen me review this set here uh, which uh, Ed for Premium Hobbies kindly sent me and this is Ammo MIG uh, airplane dust effects and in here we have two we have airfield dust and we have light dust uh, these are a little light for the colours I want to use so I'm not going to use them otherwise I would be using them I've got these old MIG pigments here that you know they've been as I said I've had them for years years and years so um, basically this one is a uh, what's this one here? This is old rust, which would be like a good, um, you know, red mud. Uh, this is rebel dust. You can see that's like a sort of mid brown. This is a this is um, concrete. I'm not going to be using that one. And then this one here is dry mud. I'll be using that one. So I'm going to use those three. Okay. This one you can see, even though I've had it for like 12 or 15 years or whatever, I've never even used it. So there's that one there. Um, I've also got some others here. This is a this is another set, Sand and Earth. You can see 23 pounds. Yeah, how old they are. Cost you more than that now, I think. Um, so this is Sand and Earth. So you can see here we've got Gulf War Sand, Beach Sand, Light Dust, African Earth, Brick Dust and Europe Dust. So you can see they're basically, you know, there's, there's not much different really. Um, but uh, we do have one here. That one there, I think, that's going to be nicely sort of in the middle of all of those. So I'm going to use that one. So the main thing we need to do is make sure we're not going to make too much mess because pigments are so, so messy. I'm going to put that one back in there. So I've got this tray. Now, if you get your, if you have steak, um, this is quite often the sort of thing you'll find on a lid of a steak or something, or even the steak will be in the base. Uh, so they're always good to keep because they make a nice tray for doing this sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is put both tracks in here. This way up, lay them in, and I've got a really nice, this is a crap stiff brush, you don't want to be using nice brushes for this. So I'm going to open up all my pigments. Now a lot of people will cringe when I do this, but I will actually put the brush into each one and mix them all around in that. Because the thing is, this is not like FS363C7, this is African Earth. Well I'm sure there is African Earth from that colour to that colour, I'm sure there is. So, you know, mixing them up doesn't really matter. I'm going to start with this one. Get quite a lot on the brush. Doesn't really matter because we're going to get nice and messy now. And I'm just going to put this on here in certain areas. And just randomly put it around places, okay? This is exactly what would happen. You wouldn't just have one colour, depending on where the tank's been. I'm just brushing it in like this. You can see with, this is why I've got the tray because of all this here. I get some of this different colour here, put that in there. And then get some of the red here like that. So that's not too much of that, but we'll, we will get some in there. Get it working in with the other colour there to achieve a different tone. And then we've got this one here, which is this browny colour. And basically what you will see is we are going to make these tracks look like not a mosaic but we're gonna make them look very very interesting if you like 
So I don't really like what I've got here. This kind of variation here is too much. I'm not liking that at all. I'm also not liking the light very much, but uh, never mind. So what I need to do is get more more of this sort of mid brown and then use the other colours to kind of highlight. So what I can do is go over that mid brown and brush it in. You can see what will happen. And you can see where I'm brushing over that, the paint's actually wearing off now because I use Tamiya XF rather than LP. The paint isn't that tough. And you can see the paint is actually starting to rub off and show the grey plastic through. But that's okay because we're going to dry brush it. So there we go. We can just brush this in. And then in the pot, in the tub, you get this here. This is thinner for washes. So you can basically mix up these pigments with this and make a wash. Now, I don't know what this is like, so I'm not going to chance it on here. So I'm going to use my good old odorless thinners. Um, because I know that this won't hurt the plastic. I use a pipette. Wherever my pipette has gone, where is it? Where is the pipette? Come here. It was there earlier. There we are. So we use my pipette. We'll get some of this out of here. Put it into there. Okay. Just like so. And then put the lid back on. Always put the lid back on. And then I'm going to get another... Actually, I use one of these brushes here. We've got a nice soft brush that will soak up plenty of thinners. And just literally dab it in. What it'll do, it'll kind of blend it all out, soften everything up and make everything look great when it dries out. And you're basically making a sort of localised wash, if you like, rather than mixing it up, you're just turning it into a wash. And then if we want to, we can spray some clear on here afterwards and uh, get it all um, get it all locked in. Otherwise, it'll just all come off on your hands. So you can see there what we've got. And as that dries out, that will kind of take on a very dusty, dirty look. Better than this, but it won't be like it was when it was all just pigments. It will be very, very interesting to look at. So we can do it section by section. Sort of, you know, do the tray's length, let it dry, do the tray's length. So we should get it done in sort of, I don't know, three hits, I guess. Should get If we go a little bit over the edge, we should get it done in two hits. So if I sort of hang that over the edge and do that much, we, we will get it done in two hits. So I'll turn the camera off and then I will come back when I'm done. And we're done. So there we go. We've got the tracks. Uh, I don't know if you can actually see the kind of effect we've got, but there we go. So we'll see then once they're, once they're all dry and all the thinner is dried out. I think I'll give them a clear coat just to sort of lock all this in. Um, maybe I'll spray some um, fixer for washes on there. I've got a feeling it's just a uh, future. But um, just, to, sorry, fixer for pigments. Just to sort of fix them in. Um, I'll, I'll brush off the areas where I don't want any, like on these horns. Uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll give it a clear coat. We'll do that off camera because you don't, you don't need to see that. Um, so if you remember in the last part, in the last part 12, which was about eight years ago, uh, we did all the tools, uh, all the wood and everything, and I stupidly did all the brackets and everything grey, and I should have done them this colour. So I've gone over, I had to mask them all up again, and I've done all the, the brackets and that in the yellow. I've left the jack grey, so it would look quite interesting, and I masked up and painted the brackets, so they're the, uh, they're the yellow-brown colour now. Obviously we're not using this um, periscope device here, so we will be using that. Mustn't forget to put the, the screen in. We've got all our cables here done. Uh, we'll have to give them some washes and some dry brush in and paint the copper cable as well and get that on there. These exhausts, I'll use pigments on them, get them nice and rusty. Um, we've got our periscopes. If you remember, we masked those up. We painted them silver first, so hopefully they're going to work. Uh, and then we've got the, the towing hooks there, again, with the bracket all painted. Uh, we've got the toolbox, or well, the wooden block, sorry, there with the brackets painted, the brackets that are welded to the to the hull. And thank you very much to all of you that responded. I asked about the colours for these um, for the uh, barrel cleaning rods. I actually drilled them out on the ends so you can actually put them together and use them as barrel cleaning rods should you wish. <laughs> so there we go. You have the the set there. Uh, basically the ends were steel and the actual um, rod itself was wood by the look of things. So thank you very much for that guys. So they're all done. 
and they're all painted up as you can see there so I'm going to call it a day there for this video just so I can get this one out because I'm getting lots and lots of people asking for this I've also got in here I've got the um, the fire extinguisher painted I've done the brackets in the sand color and then I'm going to hand paint the actual fire extinguisher itself with like a German grey color and Mr. Gledhill Andrew Gledhill is one of my uh, followers sent me this and basically this he put a note on the bottom of there this is basically the Tetra 2 decal for the uh, fire extinguisher so he sent me a couple of those four of them actually thank you very much Andrew so that will come in handy for the um, for the Panzer as well so uh, thanks for that so um, there we go so once that's painted we'll get that on and then we'll probably chip away the decal a bit or something but anyway thanks very much I shall uh, see you all soon for part 14 um, which I don't know what's going to be really I don't enjoy weathering, uh, I'm just going to get some weathering done on this and probably just come back and say here is the finished article because basically there are millions of videos out there for weathering and every one of them does a better job than me. So that's probably what part 14 will consist of. But uh, We'll get the tracks on and everything, we'll get the wheels on and then we'll get a bit of dirt on it. I've also got to do some more painting, I think I'm going to have the green pattern on the camouflage as well. So I'll see you all for that, thanks for watching and bye for now.